What is up, YouTube? It is me, Hey Archer. Thank you for being here. I don't know why I do that. I don't know why I do that. Anyway, <laughs> welcome back. For those of you listening, I just put my hands together and almost did a bow. That's how nerdy I get and how nerdy this whole thing, that's how nerdy this whole process gets. But thank you for being here. Thank you for being on the channel. If you are new here and you are on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the thumbs up. Apparently that helps too. Hit the thumbs up. If you're listening on all the various podcast platforms, leave a review. Apparently that helps that out. And um, a while back, somebody had requested that this show be on iHeartRadio. And I've actually, I submitted it about a month and a half ago. And they got back to me saying that there may have been an error that they just haven't got to my, not an error, but they just haven't gotten to my um, podcast yet, but that they would do so. And if they didn't, get back to me by, uh, I think yesterday, I should email them again. So hopefully shortly this week, maybe next couple weeks, this will be on iHeartRadio for those of you as well. A uh, big weekend in the UFC world. I will get to that. Um, and my thoughts on that, UFC 246 occurred. Cowboy versus the Notorious One. But I was reminded of something actually. And uh, I was kind of thrown for a loop. Something else kind of major happened this weekend, and I haven't seen anybody talk about it aside from, in my YouTube feed, one person making a review of it. Bad Boys for Life came out. Bad Boys 3 came out this weekend. I will link up above, of course, my um, my trailer reaction to that. I, I was excited for this movie. And as I got closer to the movie, it's I think this is what screwed it up for me. As we got closer to the movie... They started, they being Martin Lawrence and William, um, Will Smith, <laughs> William Smith, um, they started their press junket, right? And that's where they travel around and they go to the different like radio shows and internet shows and talk about, you know, the movie and promote it. And as they're talking about it, you know, they're like, oh, you know, we're not doing really as many stunts anymore. They're kind of superimposing our face on the stunt act actors. Um, Martin Lawrence just seemed like, not really happy to be doing the press. Uh, he even said if he could change one thing, it would be that this was the first time he was doing press for the movie. He actually turned down the previous time they were trying to do press uh, leading up to the movie um, because they wouldn't do things like fly him private and stuff like that, which, that mean, hey, if, that, if that's in your contract, that's in your contract. Who am I to, to say anything about that? But seeing the lack of enthusiasm for this movie from the actors in the movie lowered my expectations for the movie uh, but I will say um, this week I will make an effort to go to the movies and watch it um, so I can give you guys a review of that if you are interested um, many of you probably did not go to the movies this weekend anyway because Martin Luther King weekend at least in the northeast tends to be like a snowboarding and ski type weekend so if you're doing that enjoy this episode as you listen to it on your way back home from your trip but on to more important things here. Um, oh, sorry. I'll do some plugs before we continue, which apparently you're supposed to do on shows. Um, new review of the latest, or not the latest, but the next Witcher episode. I forget what number I'm up to. Um, that will be coming out this week. Um, my next two-minute review of Working Moms will be out this week. And either tonight, this is a Sunday night, either tonight or tomorrow, I will uh, record and release... Episode two of Swipe and Chill. A lot of you actually liked that episode and, and that's the whole series. So I uh, look forward to doing more of that um, as I travel the dating world with you guys and we guys and gals and we talk about it all. But uh, today's episode of Hey Archer, I forget what number I'm on because I always lose track. Um, on today's episode... I want to talk a lot about the UFC, UFC 246. And if you're not really that interested in UFC, then I still say stick around. This is episode 176, by the way. Uh, I still say stick around because why not? I might even talk some other stuff as we proceed. But um, this weekend, 246 was the, the bell of the ball. It was all over the internet, um, at least here in the Northeast. The Patriots are not in the playoffs, so that was not talked about or discussed. Um, everybody was online talking Connor versus uh, Cowboy. 
And I made last week's video on whether you should watch that or not. Um, and not to be a Monday morning quarterback and toot my own horn, um, but to me, it was not worth a buy. Now, did I buy it? No. Did I see the fight? Of course I did. Because it was all over the internet. And it's funny because now... Uh, um, well, lately, I've been going back in time, right? Backwards in time as the legendary greatest journalist in MMA, Eugene S. Robinson says. I've been going back in time. And I go back in time on the show. Uh, for those of you who don't know, that's why I count backwards on the episodes. It's an homage to his original show, Knuckle Up, that I was a big fan of. Um, where for me, I'm counting down to when I get to be on Joe Rogan. For him, it was counting down until he won MMA Journalist of the Year. But um, I've gone back and I've been listening to all of the knuckle ups from when they started online on YouTube. Uh, so I started at episode 500, I believe. And it's it's great to see. It's almost like a history lesson because I remember watching these episodes live as they happened and being really into the show. But it's funny to see how Eugene talks about fighters, upcoming fights, what should happen, what shouldn't happen. And then, you know, in hindsight, now seeing what actually did happen. Because uh, the show, uh, Knuckle Up, that came out six years ago now, I believe. So it was a much different time. I mean, I was in New York at the time when that was out. And, you know, I think when he started the show there, Chris Weidman had just um, beat Anderson Silva the first time. So that was, a, that was funny to hear about. Um, DC, Daniel Cormier had just, I think, won the Grand Prix in uh, strike force so talk about him coming to ufc was happening so it's just crazy to see you know to go back and see what the big things were at the time but there was an interesting uh, one i think it was episode four i want to say 412 that's probably where i left off um episode 412 um mr eugene robinson is talking about the ufc and the fox deal right because now at that point in history, for you MMA nerds and maybe some of you who don't know, um, at that point in history, uh, the UFC, of course, got popular on Spike TV, and that was with the Ultimate Fighter. And everything, got, everything blew up. It was crazy. Different time. UFC was still kind of like cockfighting for humans, and you had pay-per-views, maybe one a month, maybe one every other month. But at that point, it was starting to really pick up to becoming once a month. And uh, UFC ended up selling the rights to air it to Fox. And you had the huge, huge drop ball of Cain Velasquez uh, versus Junior Dos Santos. That was the first UFC on Fox. And Eugene was commenting um, on, the, on this episode that had long passed. That was already months past, maybe a year past. But on this episode, you know, we're in the heart of the Fox era. And Eugene's like, you know, the UFC is, is, doesn't care about giving exclusives or giving um, media credentials to like, you know, Submission Radio or, at, I mean, maybe at that point it was Submission Magazine or something like that or Grappling Magazine or, you know, anything like that. Like he, they don't care about that. What they care about is, hey, Vanity Fair, do you want to come and get a press pass to come watch this fight? Or, hey, GQ, Ronda Rousey's fighting. Do you want to come watch this thing? And they, it started to change. And what Eugene was saying was being an MMA fan is kind of like being a heroin addict or a junkie, really. So I, of course, will reference or I will put down in the comments um, the link to Eugene's channel, his new channel, Show Stomper. But Eugene was saying that being an MMA fan is kind of like being a heroin addict. And over the years, I've felt similar. Um, I felt more like it was more of an uh, abusive relationship, but... I'll, I'll let you know where we're heading here. And what Eugene was saying was, because they don't care about getting Grappling Magazine or Bach or Striking Magazine or whatever, it's because they already got you, right? You've already, as a hardcore UFC fan, MMA fan, um, which even that definition has changed over the years, but as a labeled hardcore fan, you've already, you've already done that first injection, right? You, you went to your friend and your friend was like, hey, Let's, you know, let's check this thing out. These people are going to get in the cage. They're going to beat the crap out of each other. It's going to be awesome. 
and you're like, oh, that's cool. I like Ninja Turtles or whatever. I like martial arts. And you watched and you maybe saw Bonner versus Griffin or you went back and watched some old you know, UFC fights, maybe even pride fights. And you put that needle in your arm and you injected and you were hooked. And, they, and you were like, I'm all in. I'm all in on this cage fighting culture. I'm watching jujitsu matches. I'm watching the ultimate fighter. I'm watching uh, interviews, talk shows. I'm all in. I'm every, I'm, I got it all. And at a certain point, the UFC was like, all right, well, we got that fan base and they are what they are. It doesn't matter what we do. The objective now is to get everybody else. Now, where a shift started to happen was the UFC, or Dana White specifically as the face of UFC, said that he didn't want this to take the boxing model. He didn't want UFC to become boxing because he, in fact, came from the boxing world. Um, and what that means is, you know, having pay-per-views where the headline fight is far superior to the other ones or having it where people are getting title shots and whatnot that don't matter. And for the hardcores, we were locked all in. We're like, yeah, this makes us different. This makes, it's almost like you're, you're talking to us. Like you are fan first. It's like Dana White is the fan and he's running what we would want to see. That's what it felt like at least. Um, so as time goes on, Stars start to emerge, stars go, you know, John Jones comes out, he becomes popular, of course, you have um, GSP popular, of course, and then Ronda Rousey comes on the scene and like changes the game, Ronda Rousey comes out, changes the game, time goes on, all of a sudden this Irish guy is kind of making noises in the underground and over in Cage Warriors, this guy's fighting for a belt and uh, he gets, you know, everybody's hounding Ariel Hawani, like, hey, you got to get this Conor guy. You got to get this Conor guy on your show. Conor McGregor gets on the show, and he's like, he's the every man's man. He man's on welfare. He cage fights, and he believes that he's meant to be the best on the planet in cage fighting. And as a fan, you're watching this, and you're watching the interviews, and you're like, yeah, I'll watch this guy fight. Why not? And sure enough, he just starts winning. He starts climbing. He starts climbing that ladder, climbing the rung, and then the notorious one emerges, right? And he's cocky and he's showing up. He's got the, the nice suits. He's got the glasses. He's got the cars. And he's calling his shots. And then he becomes Mystic Mac. And he's like, left hand, second round, this person, third round, you know, like he's just calling it, right? And it becomes fun. Now you're, now we're on the Mystic Mac train. And now it's, it's a, it's a, it's the Brock Lesnar all over again. It's the Ronda Rousey all over again. We have somebody who, transcends beyond the hardcores and gets the masses so connor comes and connor changes the game connor has his hiccups or whatnot um does become champ champ of course and then the then the ball game starts to change and we start entering the espn era which is when the ufc decided that fox was no longer the best fit and they go over to um, espn to have exclusive rights now at a certain point, Conor McGregor as a person became more more of the spectacle than Conor McGregor the fighter, which is fine. That tends to happen. But where the UFC eventually started to change was they started to say, hey, we're going all in on this, you know, don't care about the hardcores, we're going for the fans. And I've made videos on that, of course. But when I was watching social media this weekend on the return of Conor McGregor and I'm seeing it on ESPN everywhere. Like ESPN went in hard on the marketing, which I commend them for like, good job. Um, they were going, you know, social media was Conor McGregor, Conor McGregor, Conor McGregor. And in the video I made last week, I was even saying how this card is trash compared to what is happening for the main event, especially for what you're charging for the main event. Cause the cost went up. They raised the price again on, on fights uh, with this pay-per-view. So, you know, it's Saturday. My date plans got canceled. And I say, hey, you know, maybe I am going to actually buy the pay-per-view. Why not? I'll pay 65 bucks. I think it's maybe 70 now to, you know, to watch this fight. Because I generally do want to see what happens. I'm still a fan. 
even though I don't give the UFC any money, any money anymore, I'm still a fan. And I was like, maybe this will be the pay-per-view that I buy. Um, the first one I've bought in months. And I'm like, no, you know what? I'm like, I'm, it's feeling very boxing right now. I made a poll on Instagram and every, and majority people said, yes, they are watching it. You know, people show pictures at the bar and doing whatnot. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to skip the heroin shot this time. I'm not going to take the injection because I've been doing good. I've been clean from the UFC. I've been clean. And I'm going to, and I'm going to pass because not only are the fights below it, not pay-per-view worthy, in my opinion, all, all, all great fighters. I don't, I, a lot of fighters get uh, sensitive about this and I understand it. They get sensitive when people will say they're not pay-per-view worthy, um, but they're not, they're not pay-per-view worthy. I understand why they were on the card. I'll get to that. But I'm looking at the card. And I'm just like, this is not worth the money. And people are like, oh man, Connor's going to win. Cowboy's going to win. Connor's going to do this. Cowboy's going to do that. Blah, blah, blah. And I made my prediction the other day that I wanted Cowboy to win in the distance. But I, my pick was going to be Connor first, or I might have said second round. I forget. Via knockout. Because Cowboy is a slow start. Every time. Every time Cowboy's a slow start. Sure enough, Saturday rolls around. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. And I say, I'm going to pass. I'm just going to pass. I'm going to watch John Wick 3 because I've never seen it. Go to sleep, wake up early the next day, and I'll check online to see, see if we can find a video. Sure enough. Sure enough. 40 second fight. 40 seconds, Connor comes out, Cowboy comes, uh, sorry, Connor comes out, Cowboy comes out. Cowboy landed zero strikes in that 40 seconds. Zero landed. Connor, um, head kick, I think that may have, if I remember correctly, I've only watched the clip maybe three times, two, three, three times. The head kick um, got Cowboy kind of wobbled. They had clinched. Connor was hitting him with the up, shoulder hit which people were like oh man mystic mac is throwing some crazy things a shoulder into somebody's face it's happened plenty of times in, in mma and ufc I hate to spoil it for you it, it happens uh happens on the ground a lot um but i will not claim to know jujitsu that well to say where what position you're in where that happens but it, it tends to happen and uh i think he hits him hits him with the left Co cowboy goes down Knockout via strikes. Um, Connor wins the fight. And before I went to bed, I was watching people live streaming online and like commentating. And that's kind of a fun thing too, to see people talk through the fight online if you can't watch it. But then I thought about it and I was like, you know, I would have watched that. That They probably came out and ended the fight around 12.30, 1 p.m. Eastern, a.m., and I would have just dumped $70 to watch that because none of the other fights were of any interest to anybody else. The hardcores watched it just because they wanted to see Alexi Olenek maybe do another Ezekiel choke. Um, you know, they put Macy Barber on the card because Macy Barber was like their new up and coming person. And she lost to Roxanne, which I thought was awesome because uh, Roxanne is super nerd. And I always like when the nerds in the UFC get their, their star power they get their shine that's always fun to me um you had cow um sorry you had entity pettis fight and of course i didn't even watch the fight but i knew that all they were doing was showing the showtime kick and people in the crowd was like oh yeah the showtime kick that's right off the cage kicks ben henderson um didn't knock him out with that by the way if you ever watched the fight and he lost via rear naked and it's also that's also a weird one too because you're they, they'll, they'll show highlights of a fighter and it's like you're showing highlights of fights that are like five plus years removed. Like they're not even the same person anymore. But um, so you have that. But then you have the co-main event, right? And the co-main event is Holly Holm versus Raquel Pennington. And, you know, I'm sure they came out and people were like, oh, that's the girl who knocked out Ronda. Like, and they're watching the highlights and whatnot. And sure enough, sure enough, you have a snooze fest. I'm not sure... Who was surprised in the hardcore world? But I know there were a lot of people probably in the bars like, man, this is this is boring. <laughs> this is some boring stuff happening tonight. Like, what is this? I thought this was going to be like boxing and, and fighting and whatnot. 
and nothing's happening. They're just all circling and holding each other and laying on the ground, doing all that kind of thing. And that drags on five, uh, three rounds, I believe. And then you go into the Connor, which ended in 40 seconds. 40 seconds. So where my head is at now with, with all of this, right? Is first of all, I want you guys down below in the comments to let me know if you actually enjoyed the night of fights. Let me know. But the UFC has crossed so far into the boxing. Um, that's what I'm looking for here. Into the boxing, not boxing world. They've crossed so far into the boxing business model that they can't come back at this point. They're just so far in, they can't come back. With one exception, of course. So what do I mean by that? I mean, they believe that the money now will be in these big fights, right? The Mayweather effect. Once a year, there's a huge event. People pay their money. They watch it. They make crazy money. The fighters make crazy money. And of course, to keep the main attraction getting more money, you put lower tier people on the card to offset the cost. And don't get me wrong. Anthony Pettis made a lot of money on that fight to lose. I, the numbers came out. The alleged numbers came out. But you have... Um, it's, it's top heavy. It's super top heavy of a card. And going forward, I feel, especially when it's a, Ma uh, a McGregor fight, that's what you're going to get. I think this is, an, this is exactly what you're going to get going forward. You're going to pay the big money. You're going to sit there through a bunch of boring fights to the casual boring fight to then eventually get to the main event. Something happens. Just like the BMF title, if you guys watched that one. Something happens and you leave dissatisfied with what happens. And there's a couple reasons for that, I believe. The first one is, even though you're going to take the boxing model, uh, Mr. Dana White, it won't be boxing. MMA, the UFC will never be boxing. Because it's too complicated. It's too complex. There's too many moving parts in an MMA fight. People know, people know striking, right? When you watch a boxing fight, you know you're going to get two people put gloves on, stand in front of each other, and hopefully they just swing. And there's some cool dodges, cool jabs. There's blood everywhere. They're in there having 50 concussions in a, in a single fight. It's a bit excessive, but you get the idea. When, when you expect people to have that kind of love for mixed martial arts, they need to actually love the mixed martial arts, right? There's wrestling. There's jiu-jitsu. There's boxing. There's kickboxing, there's Muay Thai, there's a, there's a lot happening at one time. And to try to get the casual in to watch it, you almost have to educate the casual fan, which is what the commentators do as they're, you know, calling the fight. But you almost have to educate people on what is happening to grab their attention. Because at a certain point, if you don't have McGregor fighting, you don't have I'm trying to think of who's the next big one. Everybody's saying that Jorge Masvidal is going to be the... Jorge and Israel are the, are the top right now. I love those dudes, but they're not pulling regular numbers. Nobody's confused in that. But if you don't have the kind of star power to pull that all the time, you're not going to get casual fans paying you money to watch the fights. It's not going to happen. Casual fans might show up to the next pay-per-view because they're maybe riding a high from this one. I'm not sure if they're really riding a high or they're just like, oh, I feel like I'm in now because I watched one. But they might watch the next pay-per-view. Maybe they'll pay the money. Most likely they'll go to a bar or something. And they'll be like, why did I just spend $70 on this? I don't know what's happening. I don't know any of these fighters. I, I, I'm done. I'm done. Until the next McGregor fight. Then they'll come back. But I think there's an aspect of the boxing model that is not being copied. And this is where the UFC needs to copy it you need to copy it right mr dana white for some odd reason you watch this youtube channel um first of all welcome like comment and subscribe you need to make this stuff free mcgregor fights you charge for it pay-per-view old school style it's of course on digital um and you put it behind you have it right now behind two paywalls so i think you're stuck with that i I have no idea how you can get it out of there. But it's behind two paywalls right now. Everything else that is not a two-title loaded card, 
needs to be free on ESPN. And it should be streamed on ESPN+. Plus. If, it, if something... Is, I don't, that part blows my mind. The fact that there's stuff on ESPN and you can't watch it on ESPN+. Plus. That blows my mind because you're actually actively giving ESPN money. Besides the point. You need to make the fights free. If you want, you know, Holly Holm versus Raquel Pennington, you want... Hell, remember when you were doing 155s, Ben Ben Henderson, when you were doing Mighty Mouse fights? Those used to be free on Fox. And they pulled decent numbers. But you know what? It was at least something live, airing, no cost required to watch, no investment required to watch, that people could be like, oh, this is kind of entertaining. I'll, I'll keep watching it. Maybe I'll watch it every week or whatnot. But you need to do that. You got to make these free because... As a hardcore fan, the fact that I chose not to buy it because I knew what to expect, no sweat off my back. I'm good. But if anything, you've probably turned off more people to, to this whole thing. And yeah, they'll buy the McGregor fight next time because that's what people do. They want to do the popular thing, but they're not going to. Nobody's going in on this on the UFC right now. Nobody. Sorry. I'm sorry. 70 bucks to watch a card that starts at 10 p.m. Eastern? Not happening. Football's free. Basketball's free. Baseball. Everything's free. Everything's free. You can watch you watch the Super Bowl, the biggest sporting event in the not the world, but the biggest sporting event in the United States, I think. I don't know if NASCAR is still top there. But one of the biggest sporting events in the US, in North America, and it's free on TV. And it's not even on cable. It's on basic TV. You guys gotta start putting your stuff on regular regular ESPN just let it roll not old playing replays doesn't count nobody nobody watches um the NBA channel pays for it to watch old basketball games people some people do but that's not the primary reason nobody's nobody buys the NFL network because they're like oh man I want to see last week's Patriots game again no it's they want to watch the newest thing and they want it right in the moment on their phone on their tv that doesn't have cable they're paying a premium for it, maybe. But you know what? If you actually do have cable or you just have your TV plugged into the wall, you can still access it for free. I mean, there's advertisements on all of it, but you still get it. And that's where this needs to go. I I, I know that the Connor fight did well numbers wise. You know, I'm sure. I'm sure that you guys are celebrating this win because your money maker is still there, um, and I'm sure you're celebrating the win because you're like, hey. These pay-per-view numbers are great. You know, they're not what they used to be, but hey, they're good for what we've been getting. But you know what? If you want the train to keep on rolling, if you want the hardcore fans to come back in full force and have watch parties and for everything, not just once every so often, you got to you got to start making some stuff free. You have to. And just put ads on it. There's no other way at this point. No other way. Because you know what? At the end of the day, Conor McGregor won that fight last night. And that was it. There were there was zero stars aside from Conor McGregor created yesterday. Zero. Zero. I don't care what anybody says. Nobody's... I love all the fighters that were on the... I loved all the fighters that were there yesterday. All of them. Huge. I'm a, I'm a fan of anybody who climbs those steel steps barefoot in a loaded arena, steps in a cage and lets somebody close the door behind them and lets them fight it out with somebody else. You get all the respect in the world. I will never take that from anybody. But you best believe, you best believe nobody on that card, the main card, nobody on that main card on their own can draw somebody to say, I'm going to spend $70 in one day to watch them fight. Not one. Sorry. And you know what? If you guys want the pay-per-view models to keep the pay-per-view model to keep going, then you better load up these cards cuz these cards are going to be the only ones you make all the money on. The only ones. But those are my those are my thoughts. And I want to I guess I'll I'll slightly apologize here. Cuz I do feel like with the UFC a lot of times I do sound like a broken record where I'm talking about you know, the paywalls and all that kind of stuff. I get it. But, at, you know, at the end of the day, after a 40-second fight, 
I'm not sure what else you would want me to talk about. Aside from how you felt after you paid $70 to watch 40 seconds of a fight. Because you best, I know for a fact you didn't pay $70 to watch it. Other, everybody else. Maybe Anthony Pettis, you're like, oh, I know that guy, so I, I can justify this a little bit more. But you paid $70 for 40 seconds. I want you to let that sink in. $70 for 40 seconds. Plus, if you went to the bar and you were buying drinks and food and all that stuff. And you drove there. You stayed up late. Maybe you had a hangover today. All of that. You did all of that for 40 seconds. I'll leave it at that. I will leave it at that. But I want to thank you guys for being here for another episode of Hey Archer. Episode 176, according to my screen here. Don't forget, of course, like, comment, subscribe. New episodes of Swipe and Chill. New episode of The Witcher 2-Minute Review. Working Moms 2-Minute Review. And I feel like I, I feel like I haven't done a collab in a, in a while, so I might do a collab this week. Maybe it's with you. I want you guys to, of course, comment down below. I want you guys, most of all, though, email me, heyarcher1 at gmail.com. Don't spell out one. Just type the digit one. Heyarcher1, gmail.com. I want your questions on Swipe and Chill. I want your questions for Hey Archer. MMA questions, movie questions, nerve-related questions. I want them all. And I want you to be on this show because you know what? It's your show too. And I don't charge you 70 bucks and I give you more than 40 seconds of content. For everything else in my life, I'm not sure if I can give you more than 40 seconds. But on this show, I promise you, I give you at least two minutes. At least two minutes. A powerful two minutes. I'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe, leave a review. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.